أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين Here's Amon Temple. We'll join the morning awakening ceremony of Amon, the great god of Egyptians. Do you mean the great god of Egyptians was asleep last night? Yes. Amon and some of the lesser gods rest during the night. If a servant needs to pray to his god during the night, what can he do? Servants, like gods, must rest during the night. The gods have chosen days for the servants' needs. We will enter. Only worshippers of Amon and the Egyptians are permitted to enter. Strangers are forbidden to enter. All 
the priests earlier purified themselves in the Nile. They must do this in order to enter the temple. Nobody is permitted to enter the temple except the priests. They use those to wash and purify him on. Then they change his clothes and adorn him. Then they put on sweetest smelling scents to make him ready for the servant's worship. People cannot worship Amon privately or someplace else? No, we worship Amon only in the temple, in his presence. I have heard that God is everywhere. soul of our god Amor, who has flown to the sky. Now return to your earthly form and earthly figure, so to once again be present and take in your capable hands all your servants and worshippers' affairs. O oh, great god, mighty Amon! O oh, great god, mighty Amon! Wake up in peace and calm. Wake, Wake up, up in peace, peace and calm. Consume from the spiritual essence 
of these offerings and sacrifices and bless them for the earth. That's enough. Distribute them among the priests and the people. beautiful Amon is. How beautifully they've adorned him. 
Don't his worshippers take his gold and jewelry? No. The priests are watching. No one would dare do such a thing. It must be this way. Otherwise, thieves may rob Amon. I thought Amon was the protector of us. But you are saying that Amon needs the protection of the priests and servants. What's wrong with that? Amon is the most important thing we have. He must be protected. Blessings on you, my servants. I, Amon Ra, return from my nightly resting abode to manage the affairs of my servants. By my will, the morning came and life renewed. Go and make efforts for me, for I am your god. Go and make efforts so I provide you with sustenance by my will. Excuse me, my lady. Was it Amon talking? Didn't you see? Yes, I did see. But a stone doesn't talk. Amon isn't a stone. He is a soul that has been incarnated in that form. Forgive me. Amon is a mighty god with no needs. But I saw his various needs today. He needs to rest. Also clothing, jewelry, and washing. He even needed the priests to move him. He couldn't take care of himself. He needed the help of others. He needed a place to live, wife, children, and many other things. We who can walk and put on clothes, adorn ourselves, and wash ourselves, are more wantless than Amon? Are we not? I felt debilitated before him. He is only a child in appearance. I couldn't answer many of his questions, and most of the answers I gave him weren't even convincing to myself. He is very smart. Don't worry. I will take him into the temple and teach him everything there is to learn. I'll speak honestly. He made me doubt Amon. Amon is our god. <laughs> the predator seems to have been caught by the prey. What happened to the food? I am so hungry I could eat an entire bowl. <laughs> Excellency, the food is ready. Father has finished building the hut. And he didn't let us help him at all.
This is my grief hut. The hut in which I will spend the rest of my life. And weep for Joseph's separation. And I shall await his return on this road. Father, do you think my brother Joseph will ever return? Without a doubt. We must always await his return. Can you not forget Joseph? How can I? If he were dead, I could mourn him for a few days. But now I don't know how he is. I'm always asking myself, what is he doing now? What has happened to him? Has he been captured by bandits? Has he been enslaved? Have they made him sin? Is he hungry? Is he dressed? or not calm down prophet of god why do you hurt yourself so much there is a limit to the sorrow of a death but the pain of separation is eternal nonetheless i shall be patient and endure the separation in the hope he will return <laughs> <laughs> Is my chariot ready? Yes, Your Excellency. Must you take him along? Yes, Amenhotep has heard about him. I will take him both to Amenhotep and the temple. I think it is useless. Do not consider him a child. He is not like the old trees. He is young and supple and will change easily. When I talk to him, he will realize the greatness and the holiness of the Egyptian beliefs. Is young Yusuf Sif ready? I am ready to obey Excellency Potiphar's orders. Yusuf Sif, the chariot is dangerous. Be careful. Yes, my lady. Nothing will happen. Don't worry. I will place Yuzasif beside me. You also be careful. Soldiers of Amman are recalcitrant rioters. All these silos belong to the greedy temple of Amman. Every year, the biggest portion of Egypt's wheat is stored here. It appears the priests are insatiable. That garden and the women seem to belong to Amon. I've seen Amon's farms and the cattle by the Nile. Those fat, well-fed cattle fill the temple priests' stomachs. So the priests will never allow anything to endanger their interests. 
What belief can safeguard their interests better than Amon? This is another way to maintain Amon's followers. They satisfy each group in a way. Some people are slaves to bread, some to wealth, and some to fame. But many Egyptian people have seen through them and aren't deceived anymore. Lady Zuleika thinks Excellency Potiphar wants to show me the magnificence of Egypt, but it is the opposite. My wish is to show you the superficiality and hideousness of the Egyptian people's beliefs. This is the palace of Amenhotep III, the great pharaoh of Egypt. Who are they? They don't look like Egyptians. They are the ambassadors of various countries that have brought their annual tribute to the Egyptian government. What is a tribute? The countries that are under the Egyptian rule must pay a portion of their revenue to the Egyptian government each year. In return, we protect them from invasion from a foreign country. Isn't it possible to protect them without a tribute? Without these tributes and levies, the government of Egypt cannot rule. We must be grateful to them. These savages are the riders and soldiers of Amon Temple. Stay here. I'll be back. Let's go! Why have you blocked the way? Tell them to move out of the way.
If you cause unrest in the city one more time, you will be hearing from my sword instead of the lash. <laughs> Don't ever do it again. Amon's temple will not leave unanswered this insult. You tell Angmahu to harness the savagery and disobedience of Amon's soldiers, or he will receive a severe response from Potiphar. Move! The insolent soldiers of Amon Temple had to be punished. They have become impudent and insolent. Can I become brave and strong like you, Excellency? Why not? If you like, you can go to Rodamon and practice. Learning war techniques is necessary. His Excellency Potiphar requests permission to visit our Lord Amenhotep III. Greetings to the mighty ruler and the lord of the Egyptian people, the son of gods, Pharaoh Amenhotep. Greetings to our competent commander, Excellency Potiphar, the governor of Egypt. Potiphar? Yes, my lord. Have you been to the gods' workshop recently? Excepting my lord, Pharaoh Amenhotep, nobody is permitted to enter God's workshop. I thought perhaps the gods had created this child by their own hands and given him to you. Who is he? He is my new companion. I recently bought him. Companion? Potiphar. Have you become a child, or is he on par with adults? He appears to be a child, yes. But he is wiser than most adults. How wise is he that he has not yet learnt to bow before the Pharaoh of Egypt? He has not yet had the chance to learn, my lord. Forgive him. You there. What is your name? Joseph, Excellency. But my owners call me Yuzar Sif in the Egyptian tongue. Joseph is a Hebrew name, my lord. It means sorrowful, derived from sorrow. That face mustn't be sorrowful. Yuzar Sif is a much better name.
All right, use our seat. Potiphar claims you are sagacious. Let us see. How would you describe the glory and magnificence of Egypt? Although it is impolite to opine in front of the learned, I will talk because the Pharaoh has ordered me. The glory and magnificence of Egypt astound me. They remind me of high mountains and huge rocks. But I think a small lush green hill is better than a huge rock that lacks grass for the sheep. Do you really see the glory and magnificence of Egypt like high mountains? Yes, Your Excellency. But the power is beautiful when employed to serve the needy. Well said, Yuzar Sif. You have proven that Excellency Potiphar's claim is not baseless. Bowing undermines the dignity of the future Pharaoh. The one in whose veins flows the blood of gods does not bow. I didn't mean to, Mother. He inspired my admiration. Has Excellency Potiphar come here only to introduce to me his companion? No, my lord. I have come here to complain about the recalcitrance and savagery of Amon's soldiers. Every day, they are raising trouble on the public roads and upsetting the people. They fear no power and obey no law. Their self-will has become limitless. I fear that if we do not confront them, they may take action to oust the Egyptian government. Confronting Amon and the temple priests and fidelity. Amon and the temple priests are not the same thing, as much as we believe in Amon. We must be severe in suppressing the rebellious priests. But I do not agree with a hasty confrontation. <laughs> Fear not. I have plans for them. Tolerate them until such time as the proper opportunity arises. That time will come. You should be proud, Yuzar Sif. I have never seen such a beautiful child. I thank your excellency, and I have never seen such generosity. We will face a fierce battle. He 
lashed me in the face and head in public. Had I been in Potiphar's place, I'd have killed an incompetent commander like you. You fool! But he caught me off guard. Had I known his intention, I wouldn't have given him a chance. Potiphar is no match for the likes of me. You are a lion at your lord's house. There's nothing more than a fox in front of Potiphar. Stop boasting and tell me what we must do. Why are you asking a dog, barking at his own house? I really don't know what we should do. I have no doubt that Potiphar and his lord, the Pharaoh, are both the gods' enemies, particularly Amon's. But I don't know what to do. Don't you see? It's obvious. They must both be punished severely. And who is going to punish him, you think? You and your incapable soldiers? If I had more soldiers, then I'd clean Thebes of his filthy existence. If you were a man of war, you'd have shown it today. But if our and his lord, Amenhotep, are both at the peak of power, if a war were to break out between the temple and the court, unfortunately, it is unclear who would win. We'd better get along with them for the time being, until we get a proper chance. Until then, we wait. Rodamon. Excellency. I have here a talented, intelligent student. Let's see what you can do. I want him to be strong and brave. What must I do, Excellency? Excellency Potiphar wants you to teach Yusasif martial techniques. Teach him swordsmanship, archery, lancing, and in addition, how to ride a horse. I guarantee he will not waste your efforts. I will do my best, so rest assured, Excellency Potiphar. Come with me. Training sword. Is this a sword? It is a child's sword. The one who wants to hold a steel sword must train with a wooden sword to begin with. Are you ready? Defend yourself. Ah, well done. You must prevent my sword from hitting you. Bravo. Ready? If that were a real sword, I'd have ripped open your stomach. Now you hit me. You want me to hit you in the stomach? Yes, hit me hard. Then you'll be hurt. I can't do that. Do what I tell you to. Hit! All right. You asked for it.
Excellency Potiphar has returned, my lady. Greetings to you, my lord. Excellency Potiphar. Greetings to my beautiful lady, Zoleka. What are you doing? I'm watching Yusar Sif's training. How did today's sightseeing go? He mustn't be spoiled, nor inexperienced. He was frightened today, when we had to chase some of Amon's soldiers. You fought Amon's soldiers? Hadi Amon had to be punished. After the fight, Yuzasif and I went to Amenhotep's palace. Today, Yuzasif made me very proud. He is such a clever child. His reasonable answers to the Pharaoh's questions were admirable. Amenhotep gave to Yuzasif one of his pearl necklaces, and the young Amenhotep bowed down to Yuzasif involuntarily while he gave Yuzasif the necklace. No, that cannot be. Everyone in attendance was just as astounded. The boy's mother was particularly upset. Remember I told you we have much to benefit from him. I think he will be a unique and learned sage when he grows up. I am very hopeful. <laughs>